Newcastle United beat Brentford by one goal to nil, and it was beautiful. Perhaps not to watch or experience, but certainly to enjoy in the aftermath. Massive, massive result, and boy, we are back. Newcastle United are back. It was everything that it needed to be. Some fans are still a bit concerned about the performance, the lack of flowing football, chances created from open play. Forget those things for today anyway, because we do need them back eventually. But it was exactly what Newcastle United need. Ten men? No, top ten. Top ten Brentford. I'm tired. Top ten Brentford uh, came to Newcastle, hardly had a shot, and there were so many aspects to this victory that make me very, very excited for what's coming up in the next two to three weeks. And also just generally it's nice to win and beat other teams, particularly when their heads fall off like Thomas Franks does every single time he plays and loses to Newcastle United. It's really funny for me. I enjoy it a lot. But more importantly, what did this victory tell us about the future? It was kind of the first real game of the season. It's almost like the season starts now, and if the Premier League would actually do that, that would be really helpful for us because we're like fucking 11th or something. Not for long, I'm sure, but really far behind those teams at the top. Um, You know, this season was supposed to be the season of rotation. It was supposed to be the season of turning up in whatever pub or whatever else you do pre-game, um, pre-match, and you have no idea, predominantly, what the team's going to be. Kieran Trippier's always going to play. Nick Pope's always going to play. But apart from that, who's going to play? Botman's always going to play. Bruno. Um, you don't know which lads are playing. We don't know. It was supposed to be this season, the season that we invested in the squad heavily over the summer transfer window with no clue about who's going to play, particularly in attacking positions. You look at Newcastle's forward line. You look at Newcastle's midfield loads and loads of changes and to be able to do that and beat a top 10 side at home very very promising yes it wasn't pretty yes first half Newcastle weren't really there as an offensive threat maybe first 30 I think the the last 15 of the first half Newcastle did a lot of good good things and should have really gone in ahead at the break um Bruno Bruno Gamaris and two yards it should be a sure thing but it's absolutely definitely not I can think of a couple of games last season where he tends to miss with his heed very very close in when it should be easier to score, just like playing against 10 men should be easier. We're proving that it's not. Um, but yesterday, what I love, the, I love the fact, I love that the fact that that midfield came into the game. Elliot Anderson, Sean Longstaff, Bruno looked better second half. Really promising. Harvey Barnes had a really good debut and Anthony Gordon was excellent. I could go on about yesterday loads. I'm not going to know this video is more about the importance of the overall context of the result. Winning games of football is important. Who knew it? But the fact that we did it, we did it gritty. We did it hard. You're going to need maybe five, six um, results and performances like that across the season if you're going to continue to compete at the top end of the league, which we will, and also be successful in the Champions League. It's very, very difficult when you're playing as many games as you are to be able to perform, particularly in an offensive sense, at the top level every week. You need to be able to make four or five changes and grind the fuck out of results like we did yesterday. So pleasing from that aspect. Brentford came and did everything they could. They decided this kind of free-flowing, technical Brentford that the the Premier League knows since their promotion. It wasn't there. This is a side that went to Fulham opening day of the season and won 3-0, were unbeaten coming into yesterday. Thomas Frank fucked all of that off and just played like a Sam Allardyce side. Yeah, some nice passing in there, nice little midfield lad with the hairband, don't know his name. He did all right. Um, but apart from that, a lot of long balls, a lot of balls in behind, a lot of big lads against our big lads. A um, lot, of, lot of kind of running into space uh, with the ball not being there, hoping the ball will come or passing the ball into space, not knowing if lads were going to into it. That was Brentford. That's fine. I thought that it was kind of indicative of the idea that Frank thought he could um, get something from yesterday. He thought, he thought he'd identified our weakness, give Newcastle the ball. They won't be able to break you down. And we didn't until, um, well, I suppose we did. And the the goal was disallowed in farcical scenes, but it took one catastrophic error from both Brentford's defender and the goalkeeper who came flying out the box with no intention of playing the ball, played the man instead, and we got a penalty. It was just so good to be able to win in those circumstances. The team have come here to do a job on us. We've taken all three points fairly comfortably as well. Nick Pope makes one save in the first half. How much does that remind you of last season? Teams come to St. James's Park, Pope doing one or two key actions per game, and then basically having the afternoon off. It's just very us, very Newcastle United, and if we're going to do... Similar to what we did last season in the Premier League, we have to get back to that defensive solidity, not just conceding goals, but hardly conceding chances. And that's why yesterday was just so good. Forget about the other stuff at the other end of the pitch. We scored the penalty. We did what we had to do. But to keep Brentford at arm's length when they've been so good at creating chances this season and where must be one of the players in the league, you put them on Dan Byrne on the left side to try and, I don't know, 
do some shit there. It didn't work after the first 15 minutes. And essentially, Newcastle ended up doing the kind of job on Brentford, I think, that they came to do on us. It means that we can move forward, we can look at we can look forward to these games post Champions League, knowing that if we've got to get like dirty and grind out performances, if we've got to get in the refs here, if we've got to get the crowd on side, we can do it. I thought the crowd was superb yesterday, which was Saturday, the day of the the day of the game. Not everyone will be watching this the day I'm recording. I thought the crowd was superb. There were no boos at half time, despite Newcastle's limited attacking threat. Um, the noise levels really went up second half. Yes, the referee helps with that a bit. Referee kind of batshit refereeing decisions always get the crowd up. Everyone agrees with each other at the injustice. And it was just a, like a really positive day at St. James's. The game won't live long in the memory. It's one of those games that you won't be able to recall probably um, in a long time or in years to come. But it was I just felt it was crucial. I thought Newcastle did everything they had to do. Longstaff, you know... Not great at not being caught on the ball, but nothing bad happened, so I won't slate him for it because that's how football analysis works. Um, what he did do, though, was cover a lot of ground, really help out defensively and provide just like a calm option on the ball quite often when Bruno was looking to recycle possession and progress it up the pitch. He had long staff kind of quite near him. He had um, Elliot Anderson more advanced, turning players as the game went on and, and really getting a Brentford's back four. It was a really, really positive um, performance and result. Really happy. Where does it leave us? Well, I'm going to two football matches in the in the next week, and it seems like a lot from me sat here today to go to Milan and Sheffield United. Imagine playing, um, but I can't wait for both. We'll go to Milan. I think we have a better side than them, though they're good. They got beat 5-1 by their great city rivals. Probably spur, spur them on, if anything. Um, you know, if Newcastle had been beaten 5-1, not that Newcastle play in the same division as their rivals, but if they did in the distant future, the next home game would probably be a big performance. So maybe that doesn't help Newcastle loads. Then again, maybe Milan are just a bit shit, so that would help Newcastle beat them. But, you know, I think yesterday was everything. Yesterday, Saturday, the day of the game, was everything it was supposed to be in terms of performance, in terms of grit. Eddie Howe didn't have to make three mad subs that made the side worse in 65 minutes because Newcastle controlled the game in that second half. They weren't searching for something. They weren't looking for things that they weren't able to, to do and therefore Howe feels the need to kind of tear the game plan up with with multiple subs at once really promising Newcastle looked fit they looked hungry Callum Wilson plays side foot penalty into the top corner you've got to be fucking good at football to do that kind of shit and he is is there now a real conversation about who starts in Milan Wilson or Isak Isak for me because he's a better footballer but Wilson wow probably the best deputy in the Premier League in terms of players to come off the bench or push your central striker so so much positive energy from yesterday to drive us forward into Milan and Sheffield United. Cannot wait for Milan. It's just going to be one of the great occasions. Unless we lose, then I'll forget about it pretty quickly. But if we don't lose, what, 4,000 mags there with tickets? Maybe maybe the same there without tickets. It's going to be unbelievable. And we'll just give ourselves this opportunity now as we head into the next, this little international break to international great period. We've got a midweek game every single week. So we've got two games a week, PSG and Man City, the little midweek mid- Midweek games and they're both pretty good, um, and we're playing some teams that aren't that good either side of them. So massive opportunity for Newcastle. I honestly think yesterday's result, if if we'd drawn or lost that game, there'd have been so many questions about this side, about the direction. All that result does is it just quietens everything and everyone down. It makes everyone at ease with themselves at least for two or three days until we play football again, and then who knows what will happen. But that's why it was important. Eddie Howe spoke of his relief. I'm relieved. Happy for him. Happy for us. You and I if you support Newcastle, which you probably do. I don't know how you got here if you didn't. Um, and bring on Milan. Can't wait for it. Should be good. A few videos from me as well after Milan about my experience there. So speak to you then. Thanks for watching.